time for you to go be small. Can't go the jungle, cause you're in a mode. Time for you to go overload. Eat your competition alive, cause you're in a mode. What's my competition? Only me. Go head to head with my enemies and smash the smithereens. Calisthenics burning calories. Bring that fire ready to blow up. Now we're the kerosene. You're a fighter, you're a fighter. Never gonna give up, never gonna back down. Get up, get up. Welcome into Beyond the Blitz. Nick Luttrell joined alongside Tyler Cass. Week 9 of high school football is in the books. Another fun week of a lot of highlights. And in these games, it's getting a lot closer to playoff time for in high school football. That's right. The second to last week of the regular season, which means we got conference titles up for grabs, playoff spots, playoff positioning. So much on the line in last night's game. And, of course, bragging rights as well. All of the above for our game of the week. Meet me over here at camera three. We gotta go to the big board and talk a big game. It's Ryzen and Fordyce, one of the longest running rivalry games in Arkansas high school football. For decades, this game was played in week one of the season. Last three years, they've been conference foes, and this year, both entered last night's game undefeated and a conference title, maybe not mathematically on the line, but realistically, that's what was up for grabs at Paul Bear Bryant Stadium in Fordyce. And Check it out, the Red Bugs and the Wildcats. I love a good, you know, unique mascot, the Red Bugs. Certainly that. Here comes Fordyce, but also here comes Ryzen, that Wildcat offense reverting back to their flex bone roots this year and flexing their muscles right away. Chandler Reeves, the big man, he plays linebacker as well, finally dragged down inside the 20. Couple plays later, Kyson Walker gonna finish the drive off. Getting outside, getting into the end zone. Rising on top in the early going. And Fordyce though, look, like I said, both teams undefeated for a reason. This game would be a back and forth affair. You just saw the back from Ryzen. Here comes the fourth from Fordyce. Micah Gamble breaking ankles, getting to the edge, finally getting taken down inside the Ryzen red zone. And then a couple plays later, Brenton Sledge going back forth, cutting back to the middle and into the end zone. Tie this game up well, until the two-point conversion. Remember two-point conversions this one. They're gonna be really important. Both teams almost always use them. This one gave Fordyce a lead and then in the final three minutes, Ryzen would actually score to bring them within two, but Fordyce stuffed the two-point conversion and they get the win 30 to 28. The Red Bugs stay perfect. All right, let's go from the 3A to the 5A West. Senior night at Greenbrier High School. Panthers hosting a one-win Harrison team looking to pull off the upset in the penultimate game of the regular season. Let's go second quarter action now. Panther defense coming up strong in this one. Garrett James, a big time interception and a pretty nice return as well. Makes that guy miss, goes inside the 20, down around the 10 yard line. The very next play, Greenbrier would punch it in. A little bit of trickeration here. Enoch Hassan tossing to Lucas Thompson and Thompson punching it in for the Panthers. That score would put them up 21-7. Next possession, Panthers continuing to roll on the offensive in. Jack Palmer, check out this play by the quarterback, making plays like Taylon Green would make. Look how long he holds on to this ball. Goes to his right, goes to his left, makes a linebacker or defensive end miss. And then look at this, he finds his guy, Enoch Hassan, wide open in the middle of the field. I don't know where the Harrison defense is at, but that play puts him down inside the goal line. It wouldn't give them a touchdown or even a field goal, actually. This game would be close in the second half. Give credit to the Goblins. They kept it close, but Panthers ultimately win it. 35-28, they move to 4-2 in the 5A West. All right, we're now to Sheridan. He's the head coach, Kevin Kelly, new location this year. Still wearing shorts even as the weather gets cold. His offense though, staying hot. Dak McMillan to Peyton Starrett. He's in for six, but it's never just six for a Kevin Kelly coach team, right? You know they're gonna go for two, and they do. And here you go, McMillan again. This time this little slant to Jace Bradford. 14 to six, Yellow Jackets. Sylvan Hills, offense is moving. They got a fourth and goal down inside Sheridan territory. That ball ends up in the hands of a Sheridan Yellow Jacket. Lawson walling for a big time interception, but Sylvan Hill's gonna get it right back. Malachi Sherwin, a second pick six of the game for the Bears. That would keep Sylvan Hills in it for a while, but that Sheridan offense can't be held down for long. McMillan 
to JP Black for another touchdown and the Yellow Jackets rumble to a 65-41 win. Let's go down to the 5A now. Two teams tied in conference play met up last night in Bologna. And that's where we find THV 11's Carter Thweet. Well guys, I've been to a game here at Bologna once before, but that was a non-conference game. And I gotta tell you, the energy just feels a little bit different for these conference clashes. So without further ado, let's look at those highlights between the Moralton Devil Dogs and the Bologna Eagles. We are gonna start things off with the Devil Dogs. Maddox Berry looking long and what a grab Champ McNabb. His teammates reaction says it all right there. And after a play like that, you just gotta score, and that is what the senior Andrew Roden will do. Remember Roden's name, he's coming back a little later on, 6 nothing Devil Dogs. This play is 4th and 12, gutsy call to go for it, but the Devil Dogs, Jamarcus Sandage is gonna make it pay off. Touchdown and they lead 13 nothing. And then we're gonna see Andrew Roden again. Bet you didn't think he was coming back on defense. He also plays free safety, gets a pick, but just when it looks like it might be over for the Valonia Eagles, this play goes from bad to worse for the Devil Dogs. Fumbled snap, senior linebacker Austin Archer with the pick. And in this play, I didn't even know what to make of this. Ball is fumbled, it goes on the ground. I pan one way, the ball goes the other. I was completely lost. And to be honest, I still have no idea how Valonia scored on this play, but they did. 13-7 and momentum is wearing eagle colors with this tip drill. That is Hunter Wells, the safety, and they've got the ball back. And a lot of guys playing both ways in this game because here comes Hunter Wells again. They'd miss the extra point, but Valonia is in it at 13 all. But then as time expired in the first half, Dante Cox gets in for Moralton to make it 20 to 13. But man, Valonia must have had one heck of a halftime pep talk because they would come back, take a 10 point lead and ultimately win this thing. Final score, Eagles 30, Devil Dogs 27. All right, time now for some 6A action. Marion making the trip that they hope to be making again in about a month's time to War Memorial Stadium to take on Little Rock Catholic. And that's where we found Maya Ellison. Well, week nine of the 2024 season is landing me at War Memorial Stadium where the big dogs play. And tonight, Catholic High School is facing Marion. But there's something interesting about both teams that you should know. They have the same record. They stand at 7-1. So let's take a look at those highlights to see which team ruffled up some feathers to ultimately change that outcome. Senior night under the lights for the Catholic Rockets and the first half of tonight's game was all about that defense. But it was Marion who kicked things off first. As you see here, junior quarterback Zayden Walker sent one over to Chase Davis. He was trying to withstand the Rocket defense but was brought down by Bo Bradford. At one point, the Patriots were moments away from scoring their first touchdown of the night. Walker's slick fake handoff gave him time to find Jeremiah Den and what looked like a complete touchdown pass was ultimately ruled incomplete. Trying again, Walker hands it to Jalen Smith, bringing some speed behind him, but was brought down by Jackson Barron. Seven minutes into the first quarter, the Patriots found themselves going for the field goal, but it was no good. Then it was Catholic's ball. Their possession didn't last long, giving the Patriots another opportunity to score. About a minute and a half left in the first quarter, another fake handoff from Walker tricked the Rockets' defense as he found Jeremiah Dent for a Patriot touchdown. The Rockets' offense worked to even the score as we see quarterback Jackson England hand it off to Noel Lewis and ooh, Marion's Brian Benford with that attempted tackle, but it was no good. Lewis kept on going, but he was ultimately brought down. After an incomplete pass, the Rockets went for the field goal, putting them down by four by the end of the first half. Marion scored another touchdown in the third quarter, but it was the Rockets who answered the call, ultimately ending their senior night with a victory. 23 to 14. 